Hi everyone, this is Coordination and Control Part 3. It's the final instalment and it focuses on negative feedback and the control of body temperature in humans. So first of all, negative feedback. Now we've looked at the stimulus response model already. Negative feedback is a special case in which the response inhibits or reverses the stimulus that caused it. So we have here a stimulus detected by a receptor, there's a transmission of a message, an effector produces a response and that response actually reverses the original stimulus. That is what we call negative feedback and this process results in control, it's a self-regulating process and it's called a homeostatic control mechanism, which is basically a big complicated term meaning it keeps things at a particular level or keeps them the same, homeostatic. Okay, so we've just heard the idea about a homeostatic control mechanism, which is a process that's controlled by this negative feedback. And what happens in a, in a homeostatic control mechanism is negative feedback causes the factor being controlled to fluctuate about a mean or an average. Fluctuate means it goes up and down. It doesn't stay at a particular set level, but it, it revolves around a mean. So the example that we're going to look at, and I've got this diagram here to help show it, let's imagine uh, the temperature inside an oven. Okay, so I've got a graph here with temperature against time. So imagine you preset your oven to 180 degrees Celsius to bake a cake. Now what happens is the oven will turn on and it will heat up and that temperature will rise. This dotted line here represents 180 degrees Celsius. And what happens is the oven will actually heat up above 180 degrees Celsius. But when it gets too high, it will switch off. And then obviously over time, the temperature is going to decrease. When it decreases too far below 180 degrees Celsius, it will switch back on. And then it will start to heat up again. And it will keep switching on and off and fluctuating about a mean, which in this example was 180 degrees. So you see that the, the mechanism doesn't stay at a set level, it fluctuates around that level to keep it reasonably constant. This is controlled by negative feedback. The negative feedback is that the stimulus is that when it's too hot, the oven switches off to cool it down and reverse the stimulus. And when it's too cold, it switches on to heat it back up and reverse the stimulus. So the example of a homeostatic control mechanism controlled by negative feedback that we're going to look at is the control of body temperature in humans. Now, let's just test your knowledge. What is normal human body temperature? If you said 37 degrees Celsius, you're correct. The human body functions best at around 37 degrees Celsius. But as we've just seen in the previous slide, it doesn't just remain at that constant temperature, it fluctuates around 37 degrees Celsius using homeostatic control mechanisms. Now, when it gets too hot or when the body gets too cold, that's detected as a change in the blood temperature and that is the stimulus. So the stimulus for body temperature control is an increase or decrease in blood temperature. And the receptor that detects this stimulus is in the brain and it's called the thermoregulatory center, which is a big complex term, but let's just break it down. Thermo is a term re which refers to temperature and regulatory means controlling. So the thermoregulatory center in the brain is basically the temperature control center in the brain. And it's located, I'll just blow this diagram up a bit and bring it to the front. 
The thermoregulatory centre is located in a section of the brain called the hypothalamus, and that's where we find it. So that's our receptor for a change in blood temperature. Okay, the message. The message that is sent can be either a nerve message or a hormone message. That's an important point. Temperature control in the body is, con is uh, controlled by either nerve messages or hormone messages, and we're going to look at both examples of those in this video. The effectors in temperature control can be a range of things. They can be the thyroid gland, the sweat glands, the skeletal muscles, or the arterial muscles. Okay, so they are the effectors for temperature control. The responses are varied depending on which effector we're talking about. And in the next slide, we're going to have a look at each of those responses. Okay, as I said, we're going to look at the responses for human temperature control. And on this slide, we're going to look at responses to an increase in blood temperature. So this, these are the things that will happen if our thermoregulatory centre in our brain senses that we're too hot. First of all, one you'd be familiar with, we have an increase in sweating. That's controlled by a nerve message, which nerve messages which are sent to the sweat glands of our body, here you can see a very nice diagram here of a person sweating. The reason for sweating is that when this sweat evaporates from our skin, it actually cools us down. So that's obviously the response. It's reversing the stimulus because we're too hot. The evaporating of sweat from our skin will cool us back down. An example of negative feedback. Second response is a decrease in metabolic rate and that's caused by a hormone message and the hormone is called thyroxin. Now what happens is when we have the stimulus of being too hot and there's an increase in blood temperature, our bodies will start to produce less of this hormone called thyroxin. Thyroxin is a hormone which stimulates cell metabolism. And think about what cell metabolism is. It's all of those chemical reactions which occur inside of our cells. And we know that one of the major byproducts of those chemical reactions is heat. So if we're having a high metabolism, we're going to be producing lots of heat. And that's not going to help us when we are too hot. So by producing less thyroxin, we have a decrease in the metabolic rate which means less metabolism is happening, less heat is being produced, and we're able to cool ourselves down. Another example of negative feedback, because that's going to reverse the stimulus, which was us being too hot. Third response is something called vasodilation, and that's all to do with the arterioles, which are part of this extensive blood vessel network throughout the body. Now, here we've got the heart in the middle of the body. Coming out of the heart are our arteries, which transport the blood around the body. Now, as the arteries, they're like the highways of the circulatory system. They're the main roads. Those arteries branch off into smaller arteries, which are called arterioles. Now, what happens when we're too hot is something called vasodilation. Now, you've probably heard before... An artery is surrounded by a wall of smooth muscle. And you can see here, this is a normal cross-section of an artery. Here's the artery here, surrounded by this wall of smooth muscle, and this red part in the middle here, that's where the blood moves through the artery. Now, when we're hot, we actually want more of that blood to flow to the surface of our body, because then we can start to radiate some of that heat away from the body and that helps to cool us down. So that's what I'm drawing here. Heat leaving the body because the blood has flown to, flowed to the surface. So how that happens is through this process of vasodilation. Remember that the artery wall is composed of smooth muscle. So what happens is 
the smooth muscle wall of the artery relaxes, as you can see over here, in vasodilation. That has opened the, arter the arteriole so that there's more space for blood to flow, which means blood flows closer to the surface of the body, and we start to lose the heat, as I mentioned before, to our surroundings, and that heat loss helps to cool us down. So that's another example of negative feedback because the original stimulus was an increase in blood temperature. So by using vasodilation, allowing blood to flow to the surface of the body and cool us and, and lose more heat to the surroundings, cools us down. So summarising those responses, you can see that sweating is caused by a nerve message as is vasodilation, so they're both controlled by nerve messages, and the change in metabolic rate is caused by a hormone message, and that hormone is thyroxin. Okay, now these are the responses that we have to a decrease in blood temperature, so when we're obviously too cold. Now, instead of sweating, obviously when we're cold, we don't sweat, we shiver. Now, it's similar, it's a, it controlled by a nerve message, and there's a nice little diagram here. And shivering is basically the rapid relaxation and contraction of the skeletal muscles. And the reason why that happens is because through that relaxing and contracting, it produces heat, which then warms us up and increases our blood temperature, which is obviously negative feedback to the original stimulus, which was a decrease in blood temperature. Uh, now, opposite to when we're hot, when we're cold, we have an increase in our metabolic rate, which is due to more thyroxine production. So when we were hot, we had less thyroxine production. When we're cold, we have more thyroxine production which means we have a higher cell metabolism and all of those chemical reactions and processes are producing heat, which heat, which warms us up. Negative feedback through heat production. Uh, and then finally, instead of vasodilation, which we had when we were hot, we have vasoconstriction, which is controlled by a nerve message it causes the smooth muscle wall around the arteriole to contract, which makes this space smaller, the space in which blood flows through. That means what we're doing when we're, when we're cold is we're actually conserving our heat energy. I'm just trying to draw a little diagram here to show you. We're conserving our heat energy around the core of our body. We want to minimise how much heat we're losing to the surroundings. So we close off our arterioles through vasoconstriction. That keeps our blood around the core of our body and minimises how much heat we lose to the surroundings. Now, you'd be familiar with this because think back to a time of when you were really cold. What gets cold first? The first things to get cold are your hands and your feet and maybe your nose, or if you're me, your, your big ears. Uh, those things get cold because you've got less blood flow in those areas because the blood has been uh, conserved, the blood flow has been conserved to the core of your body. So summarising those things, we have shivering, which is controlled by nerve message. Same thing with vasoconstriction, where the arterial wall constricts so that we have less space for blood to flow. That's controlled by a nerve message as well. And the metabolic rate increase is due to more thyroxine production, which is a hormone. So two things controlled by nerve messages and one controlled by a hormone message. Okay, this slide just summarises the last two slides that we've looked at. Uh, so here we have the responses or the whole the whole stimulus response model uh, when you're too cold. The stimulus is a fall in blood temperature. The receptor is the hypothalamus in the brain, which is where the thermoregulatory centre is. The message can be either nerve, nerve or hormone. 
Nerve for skeletal muscles. They're the effector for shivering, which causes the blood temperature to rise, which means it's negative feedback. Nerve message causes the effector, which is the muscles in the blood vessels, to cause vasoconstriction, which keeps blood around the core of the body, so we have less heat loss, blood temperature rises, and that's negative feedback. We have a hormone message, which stimulates the thyroid, which produces thyroxin. If we're producing more thyroxin, we're increasing our cell's metabolic rate, which means our heat production is going to increase and we're going to get warmer. If we're too hot, the stimulus is that rise in blood temperature. The receptor is the hypothalamus. The message is either nerve, nerve or hormone. We can have nerve messages to the sweat glands to produce sweating, which cools us down through evaporation, negative feedback. We can have a nerve message to the muscles in the blood vessels to dilate or get bigger, which allows more blood to flow to the surface of the body. Therefore, we lose heat to our surroundings, cool down, and that's negative feedback. Or we can have less hormone production, which means the thyroid is stimulating less metabolic rate, which means we're going to have less heat production and we're going to allow ourselves to cool back, so it's negative feedback. This is what it's going to look like, even though I used this example here for an oven before. This exact same process occurs in our bodies. This dotted line would be our set point temperature, which is 37 degrees Celsius. So we're, con we're constantly heating up until we're too hot, and then cooling down till we're too cold, heating up till we're too hot, and just fluctuating about our set temperature, which is 37 degrees Celsius. So this last slide is called voluntary responses, because in the previous slides, we've looked at control of body temperature in humans for things that are involuntary, which means we don't control them by thinking about it, they happen automatically. But there are actually some things that we do do to control our temperature, uh, which we do voluntarily. And those sorts of things are, we can move to an area where it's in the sun, which is warmer, or an area which is cooler. So that's why I've got this pretty simple diagram here, uh, showing a choice that we have to heat ourselves up to move in this area or cool ourselves down to move into a, co a cooler area. We also choose our clothing, putting on uh, jumpers and, and pants and that sort of thing when we're cold, putting on lighter clothing when we're hot. So there are some voluntary responses which we can make in addition to the automatic things which are controlled by our thermoregulatory centre. Uh, that's all we've got for this lesson and, in fact, for the three-part series on coordination and control. Hopefully uh, you've been able to clarify some of these concepts and if you still have some questions or you're confused, you can always rewind, go back, watch things again um, and hopefully clarify it for yourself. So thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.